Okay, welcome to the Marketing Study Guide again. In this video, I'm going to discuss calculating net present value for use in marketing. To start with, I've created three pretend marketing campaigns, repositioning, a new product line, and expanding internationally. Initially, they'd all have money invested in them, so there'll all be a cost, 5 million, 10 million, or 20 million. Then as marketers, we then forecast the future revenues or future profits from each of these. So repositioning, I put down that we uh, have, if we reposition a brand or the organization, that'll generate an extra $2 million per year in profit. The new product will start slow, build up to about $4 million a year, and then will become less effective and go back to zero as the market changes, as competitor offerings change, technology changes as well. So that's a fairly common type um, outcome. And for international expansion, slowly growing, maturing about $5 million a year and, and maintaining itself there. Okay, now we can work out some very simple numbers quite quickly. We can work out that for repositioning, we get over the 10 years, we get 20 million back, which is two times 10. It's cost us initially five. That gives us a net return of $15 million. And we've invested five, we've got 15 back, so that's three times our, our money. And we can also work out that it takes us three years to get our money back, because we spend five, we get back two, get back another two, and in the third year, we've recovered all our money. So we can work out those financial metrics quite quickly. But the purpose of today is to determine net present value. Now, in time to time in marketing, you're going to be asked to calculate a net present value. And surprisingly, it's not that difficult to calculate using Excel. But I just want to start with explaining the concept. Our goal is to compare each of these campaigns to normal business operations. We're asking the company, in this case, faith in the new product, to put $10 million into a, a product line extension. Okay, so first question is, is that a good investment? Are we going to make more money on this path? Or will the company make more money by simply reinvesting that $10 million in its normal business operations, which are tried and proven, um, and we know pretty well what, what's going to happen. Here, we've got a mix of money, uh, nothing initially peaking and then declining. So is that a good return on the $10 million? To, to find out, I'll just come across, we use something called a discount rate, and we create something called discounted cash flows. Now I'm going to use this first example, repositioning, just to work through it. Uh, but they're, they're all included here in the video, so we'll have a quick look. What I've used is a 10% what's known as a discount rate. That means I'm going to discount the numbers going forward. Now this discount rate should represent the money, the average return I can make if I put that five or ten million dollars into normal business operations. So what does the business normally make on its investments? Okay, as in what the business does. So in this case I've used a round number of 10%. And what, what I do is I multiply that up each year by another 10%. So you've got that compounding effect that you would have uh, in, in a business situation. And typically at 10% after about seven years, it's almost, it's around the, the double mark. So you can see what's happening here. Now, why are we doing this? Now, I'm going to come across here to explain why this is happening. What I'm trying to do by net present value is to have a comparison to normal business operations. And I've provided three examples here. I'll come across one more bit. Okay. This kind of cash flow for repositioning, I've highlighted three numbers in grey and I've put them across the top here. What I've then done is uh, use the discount rate, which is 10%. So that 
number there, 1.5 plus another 10%, gets me to that, another 10%, another 10%. So after three years, that 1.5 million becomes two. Um, that number there, after five years, becomes $2 million, and that number there, after five years, becomes $2 million. So what's happening if we take this number in year 10? We've promised the organisation our repositioning. You know, in year 10, that's also going to give us another $2 million. Now, to an organisation, it's going to go, OK, that's, that's great. But, uh, you know, if we invested that money there, 770000 in the business today, in 10 years' time, at normal business operations, where we make 10%, and that's going to keep building, because we could keep reinvesting it in the business, we will have $2 million in 10 years' time. Okay, so that is equivalent to... So that $2 million in 10 years' time is equivalent to 700 today. Because if we had 700 today, we could turn it into 2 million. If we had that today, we could turn it into 2 million. That's what's happening. So I'll come back uh, uh, across. Okay, just come back one more. All right. So what's happening is you're promising these future cash flows. But as I just pointed out, that is this $2 million in, in 10 years' time. It's the same as the business taking 700,000 today and putting it into the business. Because we know, because what we do, we make a 10% return, we'll get to that anyway. So we're bringing it back to what is it worth if we reinvested it in the business today. Okay, so all of these have been discounted to a 10% rate, and I picked 10% because it's a round number, but the, the Discount rate, also known as what's called a hurdle rate or an investment rate, should be the percentage that the business makes from its normal business operations. So sometimes that's going to be less for some companies, and sometimes it's going to be more if they're in a growth market and uh, they're a strong brand. But typically that number is going to be between 5 and 20%, and 10% is often a common number to use if you don't know exactly what the discount rate is. So all that's happening is we're spending five, next year we're getting two, which is the same as we if we took 1.8 and invested it today, and all the way down. So we just sum those up, and as you can see, they add up to $7.2 million. So what's that saying is we would have, if we did this approach, we would have $7.2 million more than if we simply invested in the business uh, as is. Each of these three campaigns or marketing projects, as you can see here, all, and I've, they've all been calculated out separately, all deliver uh, a return in excess of what the business could do normally. Okay, now to do it, the calculation is quite simple. Okay, so let's let's have a look at, I've got my discount right there. So I'm going to copy and paste that number down as a value. It hasn't formatted, but... Uh, okay, so we've got a record of what it is. Okay, so I'm going to redo the formula. So I'm going to delete that formula out. It's got nothing in there. So what I want to do is use, use the... Excel functionality. So the formula, if you watch the formula box here, it's just equals. I type in net present value and I put bracket and it's asking me for a rate, as you can see. And I've got the discount rate set as 10%, comma, and I want to set the values in the future. I don't want to look at year one, uh, sorry, year zero. I'm not going to use that number because that's already been. It's already in present day. I just want to look at the numbers I need to discount, which is 1 to 10 in this case. You could go more or you could go less, depending on your cash flow. Then bracket. And then I want to add, or in this case subtract, but it's as a negative. So I'll just add the cost up front. And that's the formula shown there. So it's just net present value, discount rate, range of future numbers, 
adding or subtracting, depending on how you've done the minus sign, what we spend today. And, and that's a simple calculation, so it's done quite quickly. Okay, so it's easy to do. There are other videos discussing net present value. I also have a template that explains how to do it uh, quite simply.